so catharsis that we're finally gonna be able to release this video. Okay, first of all, it's cathartic. And secondly, are you sure you're using that word properly? Reconsiderably, yes. I don't even know where to start with that one. Are my theosoretical skills too much for your puny brain to handle? Are you just making up words to try and make yourself sound smarter? In factually, of course not, you intellificile. <sighs> That's it. I'm done. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jake, this channel is called Jake of All Trades. Today I'm gonna to be going over a song I've done before, um, Catharsis by Bandmade, but last time I only did a reaction to the acoustic live version of the song. And so um, I missed the opportunity to go over the original version of the song as well as the live version. And um, I wanted to be able to do a comparison and contrast because I wasn't doing those back uh, when I was first doing reaction videos. Um, so I wanted to go back and check out the version of uh, the acoustic live version again, um, refresh myself on that, as well as um, experience for the first time the original version of Catharsis and then the live version um, of Catharsis that's not acoustic. So I wanted to see if um, you know there is a drastic difference between the versions of Catharsis. So um, before we get into that, um, I do want to give a shout out to everyone who suggested it, which albeit wasn't a lot of people. Um, and it wasn't uh, even when I did the original version the first time, or the acoustic live version the first time around, um, wasn't that many people, but I said, screw the rules, I have money. Um, I don't have money. <laughs> um, but I, uh, I wanted to get it while it was still available to me. Um, so here we go. We have BM for Life with two votes, Interstellar Dave, Paul Engineer, Tom Clark, and Toshi Matio with two votes. So thank you guys, even though you left those comments a long time ago, uh, thank you guys for suggesting this. I really appreciate it. Um, but without any further ado, I'm gonna start off with the acoustic live version just to refresh myself on that one and then get into the originals. So here we go. Okay, Catharsis Acoustic Live, here we go. I still love this setting that they that they do this in. Oh, you 
can't wait to hear this, the original version of this. It's gonna be fun to hear Konami just rip that solo. Trying to be more mindful of like shut up Konami speaking. <laughs> I think it failed a little bit, but not as bad as last time. Okay, Catharsis, the original studio version. Here we go. Oh, that's different already. <laughs> Was so much different than what I was expecting. Okay, time to get into Catharsis Live 2020 at Line Cube Shibuya. Here we go. I 
already like the live version here. Interesting to hear the Miku's distorted guitar and uh, Konami's clean picking. I really like this version. Like he's having so much fun. I like the background on that too. The, the screens. Nice harmony. I would have thought she was doing this, but she's like <laughs> all over the deck. The spoken psyche part as well as the Konami solo. <laughs> so basically double shut up. <laughs> That was really neat. All right, what a what an interesting contrast. Like from the acoustic version, I got you know a certain sense of like what the song should be and what it was meant to be, and then like going to the studio version completely like threw out those ex threw out those expectations. And I understood that maybe Catharsis would be a little bit more of a high energy song, a little bit. Um, at least because of the the romp in the in the middle of the acoustic session, so I'm like, okay, it, like it sounds like this part's pretty groovy and um, you know could be like I, I was kind of imagining like a little bit of like a, um, a hard rock breakdown or something, and like Konami going like nuts uh, in terms of her guitar solo, and it that section really defied my expectations. It wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Like instead of it kind of being like this kind of heavy sort of thing, you still had. Konami do a solo, but it was like, like Miku's rhythm portion was like, not like this chord heavy, intense uh, rhythm section. It was a little bit like this, like a, a complimentary fill section to what Konami was doing in terms of her solo. So I thought that was quite the interesting choice and a lot different than what I had expected. And so um, I was really, really fascinated to kind of catch that difference there um plus the original version had like this introduction to the song that the acoustic version didn't have um so i thought that was kind of um, a neat difference as well um plus the studio version uh, and live version of the studio version um <laughs> had like you know a little bit more of a faster pace whereas the acoustic one was a lot more laid back and something that you'd like to listen to before you go to sleep at night it was just like yeah, it is something that is very calming, very soothing to the soul. Um, whereas Catharsis is a little bit more like, 
yeah, we got we got some energy. It wasn't like this high powered, like heavy thing, like nonfiction maze or or whatever, but still a lot a lot more faster pace. I was glad I was able to like kind of hear um, Konami's solo this time, uh, whereas like in some live versions she's very buried. Um, this one, like, I can still hear her pretty clearly. And the nice thing about live versions is being able to pick out like Miku's guitar versus Konami's guitar, where they kind of blend a little bit more um, in like the studio recording, because um, in the studio recording you'll have um, you know some double tracking going on um, with you know rhythm guitar, so. It's nice to be able to hear that in um, in the live version. One of the other things I noticed um, between the two different versions, just kind of going back and like listening to section by section here, um, kind of going into the intro more specifically, you have Konami kind of do this do 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 in the original version of the song, and then in the acoustic, it's like this da no 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 no. And I thought that was kind of an interesting take because like she still kind of goes a little bit crazy during the solo portion in the acoustic. Um, but then she doesn't really do that in the in the intro for the acoustic version, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, uh, interesting choice, um, which I guess makes some sense if you're trying to dial back um, the energy and make it a little bit more um, so of a soothing song versus like the high energy um, song that, um, you know, Catharsis, um, was originally written as. Um, and another thing I noticed too, um, just listening, um, to the beginning of the first verse is that they are definitely in different keys. So then in the verse in the pre-chorus, something I noticed too, um, like in the original studio and, uh, subsequent live versions, you get kind of Konami kind of doing this, um, kind of crazy thing, um, in the background while Miku's kind of doing some chords. When I was listening to it in the um, studio, or the the, uh, the live version, you know, I can hear Konami in this ear and Miku in this ear, but in the studio version it's reversed. Um, so like I hear Konami over here and Miku over here, which is um, a little bit different than what I'm used to um, listening for um, their various parts. Uh, and then comparing that to the acoustic version too, um, like, so I mentioned Konami is kind of doing like this kind of quick sort of thing in the background, um, whereas uh, in the what Konami does in the verse in the acoustic version is she's kind of doing like this, um, you know, arpeggiated chord across the different strings, um, you know. So it, it's definitely a different character um, from what she's doing between the two different versions of the song. And then, uh, but the the pre-chorus was actually fairly consistent because. Um, Miku's still doing kind of like those, um, you know, those one-off chords where it's like, do, and then slides down, and Misa's kind of going up and down, sliding up and down as she's hitting different, um, hit, di hitting different notes, and that stays consistent. Um, and then Konami, um, still kind of does the clean thing, um, that she does in the pre-chorus, which, you know, I, th I thought that was kind of fascinating that Miku kind of has the distorted guitar, and then K uh, Konami goes clean for the pre-chorus in the studio version, um, and then even, and still does the same thing in the acoustic, which I, you know, considering the amount of change-ups that were already going into that part of the song, it's kind of interesting that she keeps that consistent. So then another thing I noticed, going into the second verse, well, actually the, the chorus, first of all, you know, you had Kami still kind of doing some crazy stuff in the, um, in the studio and live version, but then in the acoustic version, um, she kind of, it sounds like she's doing, um, like some, uh, like some octaves, like, uh, and, and so it's, it's not really kind of going like real crazy, like almost solo like. So I thought that was kind of an interesting change up as well. But then, uh, kind of getting into the post chorus, it's kind of like, okay, kind of like the intro, and, um, you know, the second verse is kind of similar in that regard. And, um, the, uh, she even keeps, uh, consistent between the two versions, the kind of little, little lead fill. Um, between both acoustic and the studio, so I thought that was kind of interesting as well. Um, then they they keep that um, that increase in pace in the second part is uh, of the second verse, um, which I thought was kind of cool. It was consistent between the both versions, so I mean you can't change up too much, otherwise you're gonna have totally different songs. But um, it's still uh, need to keep see that consistency between the two. Second chorus, same uh, same thing as the first chorus, and so that I thought. Um, I like that uh, Konami lead fill, and I hear it 
uh, much better in the live version than I do the studio version. Okay, so for the solo portion and the, or the build up to the solo, um, you still have like that like little bit of uh, build up in Konami speaking and stuff. And I noted when I was noting the live version that uh, Konami was speaking even during Konami's solo. She broke the rule. <laughs> um, I it's in the it's in the um, original studio version as well. It's just I didn't notice it so much because I was really honed in on Konami's solo. And um, it was her voice was a lot more band limited in the studio version, whereas like there is no real vocal effect, vocal vocal uh, vocal effect on uh, the live version. So and she completely says nothing during the acoustic solo. So um, that's why I didn't really notice it until like the live version was when it was much more obvious. Um, then something I noticed between the um, the studio version and the acoustic version was, um, you know, why it threw me off so much. Like, Miku in the acoustic version is kind of like doing like this uh, mute picking sort of thing. Um, whereas like in the studio version, it's like this much more complicated, almost sort of bluesy-ish um, riff that kind of complements Konami's solo. So I thought that was um, just a very interesting change up, very different than between the two different versions. So that was something that, um, you know, I didn't pick up on the first time and it was like, oh wow, okay, that's why that sounds so different. Um, you know, Konami's still ripping it between the two different versions, um, but Miku's rhythm part is definitely a lot different. Going into the last chorus, um, you know, the, the differences are still consistent between like everything that built up to that final chorus. They still kind of have that little pullback on that, on that line there um, in the second time she sings that. And um, I noticed the like, Konami's little like lead part stands out a lot better in the um, in the studio version than the live version. It kind of like gets lost um, in the live version, but you know it it happens. Um, so that that was kind of interesting too. And then one other last little difference that I um, noticed was like the speaking part was Psyche, where she's like uh, one, two, three, no worries. No, and I, I I don't have the lyrics fully memorized. Again, forgive me, um, but that part um, where she's speaking, um, she—it's a lot more gang vocal in the. Um, in there's a lot more layers in the studio version than live. She just kind of does it ad lib, not not so much ad lib, but you know, just on her own solo in the in the live version, um, as well as the acoustic version as well. So I thought that was a notable difference as well. Um, so. Really, really interesting to pick that song apart between the three different versions. Lots of lots of little like nuggets to pick out. So um, if you like the video, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on all notifications so that you don't miss anything going forward. Leave a comment letting me know what uh, Band-Aid song or other band you'd like to see me check out next. Um, I will give you a shout out when I do that video. Also, if you have any suggestions for guitar covers or vocal covers, also leave those in the comments and I will give you a shout out when I do those covers. Um, also, thank you to BM for Life and Jonas S for supporting me on Patreon. It means a lot to me. Thank you so much. Uh, but that is all for today. Enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, God bless you and rock on.